All right, welcome viewers um, to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be discussing logarithm. My name is Precious Ugweze, and if you are new to our YouTube channel, please consider to subscribe and um, hit the like button and make comments. Of course, we'll respond to your comments where always necessary. All right, so logarithm, that is what we want to discuss. So what is logarithm? So we know that by definition, the logarithm of a number is, of course, always given to a base. So you cannot, you only have the logarithm of a number, say logarithm of m, and it will always have a base, say x. And so this is called the number of the logarithm and number of the log. And this one is called the base of the log. So the, the logarithm of this number, m, is the number that the power will be raised to to give you that m. So what that means is that if we say that logarithm of uh, m base x is equal to a, the implication is that if I raise x to the power of a, I should get what? m. And... Okay, so, and you can see examples on that. For instance, if you have the log of, um, for example, 10 base 10, so you will see that this is equal to 1. And of course, we're going to see this as one of the rules of logarithm, that the logarithm of a number to the same base is equal to 1, because this is the same thing as 10 raised to the power 1 by indices is equal to 10. So this is very much correct. Okay, and then we have other examples, like, for instance, if I say the logarithm of 10, uh, say 1,000 base 10, this is, of course, equal to 3, because we know that 10 raised to power 3 is equal to what? Is equal to 1,000. Okay, so, and that is the basic definition of logarithm and the relationship between logarithm and indices. That is why both of them actually go hand in hand. Okay, so you can always uh, convert or move uh, an expression from logarithm to an indicial expression, and you can move indicial expression into a logarithmic expression. Okay, so now for us to be able to do mathematics involving logarithm, we also would need the rules of logarithm, just as we have the rules of indices. So we are also going to look at the rules of logarithm. And so let us consider the rules of logarithm. The first one we're going to look at is the multiplication rule. So this one says, if I have the log of m times n to a base, let's say base a, that this is the same thing as the log of m base a plus the log of n base a. And so multiplication changes to what? To addition. And so you see for the second one, if I have the log, this one is a division rule. If I have the log of m all over n to base a, this is the same thing as the log of m base a minus the log of n base a. Okay, so now these are the first two laws that uh, we are going to look at. And then what about the third one? So we have the third rule of logarithm, which we, I just talked about. The logarithm of a number to the same base. If you have log a to base a, that is going to give you what? One. And then we have the fourth one, the logarithm of one to any base at all. When you have the log of 1 to any base, say base A, this is the same thing as what? Zero. And of course, you can see all of these come from the definition of logarithm. You can see that this is the same thing, like I said there, A raised to power 1 is equal to A. And here you can as well see that whenever you raise a number to the power of 0, you will always get 1. And so we look at the fifth rule. All right, so for the fifth rule, we have that if I have the logarithm of a number, say m, raised to the power of n to base a. Now, this rule says that the power of the number of a log should come to the back 
and become a multiplier. That means I should have n log m base a. So the n is going to be a multiplier of this log m base a. And they are, of course, the same. And then what about the sixth rule? The sixth rule now says, what if the power is not on the number of the log? If the power is on the base of the log, what happens? How do I, you know go about that one. So this one says that the, num the power of the base can actually come to the back also. However, when it comes, it will come as a reciprocal. So this is going to give us 1 over n times log m base a. Okay? Now, there are other laws that we are going to see, other rules that we are going to see. The one we call the rule of change of power. And this one says that, sorry, change of base. He says, number seven, that if I have the log of, say, M base A, I can decide to change the base. And this is going to give me the same thing as the log of M. I can choose any base at all, say X, and then all over the log of A base X. So the implication is that if I have log, say, 8 base 2, I can write this as log 8 base, maybe 4, all over log 2 base 4. And both of them, when you resolve it, you will definitely get the same value. Okay, so, and then the other rule says that if I have the log of B base A, that I can as well also change base here by taking the reciprocal. That means if I have one all over that log, now the base will now become the number, and the number will become the base. So here I will now have log A base B. And finally, for the rules we are going to look at, is this one a very vital rule. It says that if you have any number, and this number is now raised to the power of a log, and the log now has the base of the number that you just raised to the power of the log, and if the number of the log is any value, say x, that this is going to give you just the number of the log, which is a power. We make use of this rule so much when we deal with uh, uh, topics in differential equations, because uh, not just differential equations, in functions. You are going to see, for instance, if I want, let's say I have the lean of uh, y. Meanwhile, that reminds me. Please always note that the logarithm of a number to base 10 is called the common logarithm. We usually call this the common logarithm. And why we call it common is that in most cases, we don't put that log 10, base 10. And so if you see any log written, for example, log m now, without a base, this is a common logarithm. That means the base is what? 10. And so now, but if you have this one now, this lane is called the natural log reading. So we have the two, two special kinds of logs here. Yeah? So we have the natural log reading, also called the lane, and we have the natural log reading, log reading to base 10. Now, what is this natural log reading? The, the natural log reading lane stands for log reading to base E. And so you will see in topics like functions that if you have the lean of, let's say, X, and you want to take away this lean, all you will need to do is just to take the exponent of that lean function. If you take the exponent of the lean function, this is going to give you X. Why? Because, like I said here, lean X is actually, lean X is the same thing as log X base E. And so if you now raise e to the uh, power of log x base e, which is your lean x, so you see that this e here will take away this log e, and then you will get your x. And that is the, one of the applications of this ninth rule. Okay, so now quickly we are going to see examples, and um, we'll see how to apply these rules in solving problems of log reading. Okay, so let's... We'll start here. Now, this one says simplify the following. Okay, so what do you do with this? This is just normal simplification. And so what do you do? You are going to understand that, like I said, logarithm and indices work hand in hand. And so the first thing we need to do here is to apply the law of indices, which will tell us that this is the same thing as uh, log of uh, 
81 raised to the power of 1 over 3, this 3. And so what am I going to do here? To be able to evaluate this, I will need to simplify this logarithm in such a way that the number will be in base 3 so that I can apply this rule where we have that uh, if you have the logarithm of the number to the same base, it gives you 0. So I will try to see, can I change 81 to be in base 3? And of course we can. If you do that, 81 in base 3 is the same as 3 raised to power 4. And you remember when this 1 over 3 multiplies this 4, you will get 4 over 3. And that is to base 3. And then at this point, I can apply this other rule, the rule of power on a number of the log. And that is going to give me that this 4 over 3 can come to the back. And if it does, you have 4 over 3 log 3 base 3. And of course, log 3 base 3 is 1. That is going to give us 4 over 3 as the solution. The second example. This so one says log 125 base 5 plus log 0 0.2 base 5. We should simplify. And so what is this going to give me? Um, by the rule I have here, addition will change to multiplication. That is to say, I can bring this log together. And if I do that, I am going to have log 125 multiplying 0 0.2 up to base 5 because the both of them have the same base. And so what do I do? I know that um, 0 0.2 is 1 over 5. And that is going to give me log 125 times 1 over 5 base 5, which is the same thing as the log of when 5 divides this, you get 25 base 5. And 25 is the same as log 5 raised to power 2 base 5. These two comes to the back. You have 2 log 5 base 5, and that will give our answer as what? 2. Okay, now let me write the third example here. It says... Right, so this example says we should simplify log 27 base 3 plus 2 log 9 base 3 minus log 2, 4, 3 base 3. So what do we do there? Very easy, apply the rule, multiply, addition will change to multiplication while subtraction will change to division since all of them have the same base. And so that's going to give us the log of 27 times 9 divided by 2, 4, 3 all in base 3. And this is the same thing as uh, 9 can go into 2, 4, 3 to give us 27. And 27 into 27 is 1. So you will get log 1 base 3. And remember one of the rules there says that when we have the log of 1 to any base, that that is the same thing as what? 0. So and 0 becomes our answer then. So we move to example 2. Another kind of examples that you can encounter in log reading. And this says show that all right so this example says we should show that this left hand side is equal to the right hand side so what do we do apply our laws of indices to see what the right hand side is going to give us now we know that this right hand side is going to give us the log of 27 raised to power of half plus the log of 8 raised to power of half plus the log of 125 raised to the power of half. Everything is all over log 6 minus log 5. Now, but I can reduce this to base 3, this to base 2, this to base 5. And if I do that, I am going to get the log of 3 raised to power 3. 27 is 3 raised to power 3. Now, when that 3 multiplies half, you will get 3 over 2. Then plus the log of this one is 2 raised to power 3. And that will give us 3 over 2. When this goes, you will get 5 raised to the power 3, which is also 3 over 2. And everything is all over log 6 minus the log of 5. So what do I do next? We will discover that from here now, I can apply the rule of log, which says that the power can come behind as a multiplier. And I'm going to get that this is going to become 3 all over 2 log 3. And plus, this one will also come behind 3 all over 2 log 2 minus 3 all over 2 log 5. And everything is all over the log of 6 minus the log of 5. And this is going to give me, now I have 3 over 2, 3 over 2, all through in the numerator, so I can bring it out. If I do that, I will get 3 all over 2 into the bracket of log 3 plus log 2 
minus log 5 all over the log of now but i know that the log of 6 is the same thing as log 3 times 2 and so that's going to give me log 3 times 2 minus log 5. Now, however, if you simplify that denominator further, you will get log 3 plus log 2 minus the log of 5. All over this, multiplication will turn into addition, and so you have log 3 plus log 2 minus log 5. And, of course, the numerator here is the same as the denominator. And so you have only 3 over 2 left. And that is exactly what you have on the right-hand side. And so you have shown that this particular log expression here is equal to what you have on the right-hand side. Now, let's see the next example, example 3. All right, so this example says, given that log 2 base 10 is equal to this, log 3 base 10 is this, and log 5 base 10 is this, we should determine the value of this, okay? So we are going to use the rules that we know to handle this. And what are we going to do? We, are, we will try to see how can I write log 12 in base 10 to, you know, in a simplified form to contain any of these 2, 3, or 5, so, and that is the only way to, ex, uh, you know, to simplify or to determine the value of this uh, particular law given here. And so, of course, I know that I can split 12 into 4 times 3. I can split 12 into 4 times 3 base 10. And I know that my 4 times 3 base 10 is going to be the log of 4 base 10 plus the log of 3 base 10. Now, then my 4 base 10, I don't have 4 here, but I have 2. And 4 is the same thing as uh, 2 raised to power 2 base 10, then plus log 3 base 10. And so I can take these two to the back. I will get 2 log 2 base 10 plus 3 log 3 base 10. And now I can substitute. So now I have this log 12 base 10 simplified into log 2 and log 3. And so if I substitute, my log 2 base 10 is 0 0.3010 plus log 3 base 10 is 0 0.4771. And if I multiply out this and sum, I am going to get the value that is needed, which is uh, if you sum this, you get 10791 as the solution. And the same is what we will apply here. So let's look at it. B, we have log 35 base 10 minus log 17.5 base 10. Now from the uh, what I am giving up here, there are no fractions. So I will try to take away the fraction. So what do I do? This is the same thing as log 35 base 10 minus, I will change this into a fraction and that will give me log 35 over 2 because 17.5 is 35 over 2, and that is in base 10. And this is going to give me, remember that um, in indices, that, sorry, in logarithm, that this subtraction can be turned into division. And so I am going to have the log of 35 divided by 35 over 2, all in base 10. And when I turn this into multiplication, I will get the log of 35 times, this one will you know, invert, I will get the reciprocal, and that will give me 2 all over 35 in base 10. And so this 35 will take away this 35. So I will only have log 2 base 10 left, and which has been given to me as 0 0.3010. So that's the solution for the second part. Okay, so these are the examples we are going to see, you know, in using the rules of log to simplify logarithmic problems. Now, the next part of our content is going to be on logarithmic equations. And we are going to discuss that in our next video. Um, if you have followed us to this point, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, so that you will get notifications of our uploads and whenever they come in. And also, please comment and hit the like button. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.